The option provided by Van der Ven on the outside is Hillhouse! And the best chance of the match so far falls to Hans Hillhaus. It was just a fraction too high for the Dutchman. A delightful ball is played in by young Stephen Wright. Right to the far post. Hillhouse found the gap in defence as Rangers reorganised following the loss of Cowan. And this could so easily have been the opening goal. Hans Hillhaus stretching for that. Couldn't get above it. Hillhouse, Grant, and Mark Walters will be in trouble for that late reckless challenge. Well, referee McGinley determined to keep a very tight grip on things. It was Stephen Wright who was caught by Walters, and referee Brian McGinley brings out the little black book again. Walters is the first Rangers player in trouble. And there was Wright stretching. And Walters just stayed in the way of right there. Right free kick. Hillhouse helps it on. Spikeman doing the marking job on Jess very effectively. And once again, McLeish comes in behind Haitley. And the free kick given against the Aberdeen centre half. He's explaining that the ball was hanging there in the wind, that's what induced the challenge. He's hit it again. Trying a little head flick towards Johnston. That's good play by Stevens. Brian Grant's header. And a fine first time effort by Ferguson. Such power on that right boot, and Ferguson clearly thought the goalkeeper saved that. He's looking for a corner kick. But a goal kick has been given. Goes Connor, there's Ian Ferguson, now Durant. Playing that beyond Connor, who took his arm away just in time. Fine play by McKimmy. Well, Connor's experience helping him out there. Almost gave away a very silly free kick, or even penalty kick, perhaps. There's Hillhouse, Van de Ven storming up. There's Brian Grant. And a fine effort from Grant. It's a reminder to Rangers, they cannot afford to lose concentration for a second in defence. Well, Aberdeen so fluent in this position coming forward. Ball played across by Hillhouse for Grant's first time effort, swerving away from the left-hand post. There's Ferguson. Looking strong and busy in midfield for Rangers. Now Walters back on the left. Cross is too high for Haithley. Retrieved though by Durant. Get away by right only as far as Ferguson. That was well taken by Ian Ferguson on his weaker foot, the left. Couldn't quite keep it down. Well, the ball played and headed out there by Stephen Wright, and Ferguson taking this first time on the half volley. It was an excellent effort. Stuart McKimmy in his new role in central defence. Jess got the touch. And this bit again, pumping the ball through the middle. McKimmy knew exactly what he was doing with that header. Connor dropping back to left back with Robertson left upfield for a moment. There's Durant. Hay play. Ferguson. It goes to Stevens. Always wants to check onto his right foot, though, Gary Stevens. Interception made by Wright. Here's Ferguson. Hustled all the way by Grant. Kimmy's clearance. Walters wants to bring the ball down and take on Wright. Going for the early cross. There's Haitley. It's a magnificent goal for Rangers. Gary Stevens, that ball flighted across, and this is Mark Haithley 
Bucharest and what a double. Well, a goal of genuine quality. And Rangers now go back into the championship driving seat. Oh, what a goal it was. Haitley's 14th of the season. It took a long time to convert the Rangers supporters as he replaced Ali McCoy in attack. But with his tireless, selfless performances over the months, he's become a favourite of the Rangers supporters. And now he's going to have to go back and help in defence. Chris Woods has overcarried. And there's going to be a free kick to Aberdeen, who will want to reply very quickly indeed. Well, this is another vital moment of the match, potentially. Haitley's back now defending. Alec McLeish has gone forward. Aberdeen now have to come forward and score if they're to win the championship. An indirect free kick from inside the box. It's turned back there for Robertson. Charged down by Brown. Kimiri turns it across towards Van de Ven. Brown get up well. Walters well tackled by Van de Ven. Well, the Rangers defence grouped quickly there to cope with that Aberdeen attack. Well, the Rangers supporters now sensing the prospect of the championship once again. Jess bowled over there by Hullock. Making his presence felt again in midfield. And there's going to be a hold-up. Treatment required for an Aberdeen player. It is Ian Jess who has not yet recovered from the challenge made by Harlock. Well, Terry Harlock has not been able to do too much in the creative sense this afternoon, but his spoiling work in midfield has been important to Rangers. Smith has joined Archie Knox in the dugout there. Now there will be some time to be added on at the end of this first half for injury stoppages. Well, that's a very sad moment for Aberdeen. Ian Jess hurtling off, helped by physio David Wiley and Stephen Wright. Two strikers on the bench though for Aberdeen, Willem van der Ark and Scott Booth. Played across there by Bett for McKinney. There's Grant. Now Wright. Ball in early, McLeish has gone forward and he's been penalised for using a bit of leverage there on the shoulders of Haitley. Ian Jess still out of the play, over on the far touchline. He's not fit enough to continue, I don't think. Well, he's limping back onto the field, but I wonder if he'll play much more in the proceedings you may see a fresh Aberdeen player in the second half but Aberdeen will wait to assess things during the interval back it goes to David Robertson and that indeed was the last attack of a tumultuous first half a match full of tension but Mark Haitley has settled things undoubtedly for Rangers with a glorious headed goal after 40 minutes, set up by Mark Walters, Rangers had territorial advantage throughout the first half, Aberdeen coping extremely well defensively until that inspired goal from Haitley. So at half-time at Ibrox, it's Rangers 1, Aberdeen 0. So Scott Booth has been introduced to the fray by Aberdeen for the second half in view of the fact that Ian Jess has not recovered from the injury he sustained just before the interval. So that shouldn't change the Aberdeen path of the play too much. As the final 45 minutes of the league season starts, and there could still be immense drama to come. If the score stays the same, remember, Rangers are the champions. So Aberdeen required a score. If they have to retain any chance at all, Connor impeded there by Nisbet. Referee Brian McGinley goes trotting across to the Rangers defender. He has a word with him at long range. He gets already taken. Aberdeen starting with some purpose. The tackle came from Harlock and Vett. Vett wasn't entirely happy with the quality of the pass. This is Johnston. Haitley had to come back to remain onside. Connor wins it for Aberdeen. There's no free kick. 
Johnson took a knock there. Going to catch an arm in the face. Push forward. Touched on by Hillhouse. There's Harlock. Long chase on. McKimmy nods it back. Hately thought he had a number nine on his back. Despite the attentions of Hately, he kept his eye on the ball. A foul's been given to Aberdeen for the challenge by Hately. Hillhouse playing it on. There's Booth. And now Peter van der Ven. Stevens. Throw goes to Rangers. Another vital phase in the match, this. The Rangers now with the tactical problem about deciding whether to hold what they have or go forward looking for more. Aberdeen left now with no option at all. They have to attack. But they are very studied and careful about that. Normally Aberdeen remain patient, trying to keep the passes flowing through the middle of the field. Robertson getting in quickly ahead of Ferguson. David Robertson back to face the ball as Scott Lisbeth sends the long throw back towards Chris Woods. Johnson's headed on into space. David Robertson has to be quick. Clearance blocked by Durant. That's picked up though by Connor for Aberdeen. Denied any space though by Ian Ferguson. The throw goes to Aberdeen. Well, Ian Ferguson has such a long time suffering from illness and injury. Now coming right back to his best as the season is ending. Good play by Grant. Space on the right for Van de Ven and Wright. There's the young fullback. No bet. Setting it up there for Wright. Stevens was in the way. Van Walters virtually trampled to the ground there by Van de Ven. No argument about that free kick. Gary Stevens with the free kick. Hate they play into space for Nisbet. Up goes McKimmy. There's Booth. Booth caught there by Hutler after the ball had gone. Now referee Bagilly must take some action this time. He had a lecture with Harlock in the first half. And there's no question that this time. Harlock will be shown a yellow card, and he has no complaint at all on the evidence of this challenge. So Booth has recovered, it's a free kick which McLeish will take. Led away by Nisbet. Durant gives chase. Can be at full stretch, needing help from Grant. by Wright for what? Long chase for Hillhouse for Spikeman. Brought kindly for Rangers straight to John Brown. Hayley getting up again. The police didn't follow him that time. Here's Connor, bringing up the line for Booth. The layoff was intended for McKimmy, but he's released Johnston. Hately waits in the middle, he will look to be offside. Well, the referee's allowed the goal. And Rangers are two in front. The error made in defence by Scott Booth. Chris Woods is celebrating, so too are the Rangers supporters. Mark Hately gets his second. Here was Johnston, now Hately appeared to me to go into an offside position behind Eric McLeish as the shot was released by Johnston. Watt couldn't hold it, it bounced away from him and Hately was first to react to turn the ball into the net. Well, here's Johnston again, 
playing that beyond the McLeish block by Watt. Well, Hayley in a suspiciously offside position, but to give credit to Aberdeen, very few complaints from them. And now they have a major mountain to climb. The goal coming ten minutes into the second half. There's Jim Bett. Woods in trouble. There's David Robertson trying to keep the shot down. Oh, Woods diving in there bravely. It's going to be a goal kick. Aberdeen trying to hit back very quickly and there's going to be an alteration made instantly by Aberdeen. They're bringing on Willem van der Ark and withdrawing Peter van de Ven, which means they're going to play three strikers for the closing stages of the match. That's scarcely a surprise in view of the score. Up goes McLeish with the header. Van de Ven still on the field. The substitution has not yet been made. Free kick for the challenge by Walters. Let across here for McKimmy. He has a shooting chance. Uh, not quite so deadly on his left foot as he would have been on the right. And McKimmy striding forward with his back forward position. Aberdeen have to go for Brook now. So the substitution has now been made down below us. Peter van der Ven has gone off and Willem van der Ark is on. Harlock playing it across, here's Walters. McLeish retrieves it. Plays it against Johnston, he'll accept the goal kick if the ball runs. Good experience, composed play by McLeish. Well, he now has the task of lifting his Aberdeen teammates to the closing half hour of the match. They have to score twice to win the championship. McKimmy, now Connor. Aberdeen trying to step up the pace. The clearance came from Ferguson straight to Robertson. This is Connor. Here's David Robertson showing excellent close control. Playing it in low. Here's Hillhouse. And almost met inside the six yard box by both. Woods did well. So too did Hillhouse. Well, this is good play by David Robertson, playing the ball in low this time. It was screened there by Hillhouse as Brown went down, as Backman rather went down, and Booth couldn't get a touch. Brown did well. That was right. Chase for Booth. Stevens should be quick enough for this. Indeed he is, and skillful enough. Here's Hardlock, tackled well by Grant, breaks for Bett. Angling out across for Van der Ark, this bit did well. There goes Brian Grant. An offside flag up against Van der Ark, I think. And John Brown has gone down very awkwardly indeed. It will be a free kick to Rangers when everything settles down, but John Brown clutching his left calf. Oh, that's an area where cramp is frequently a problem. It's certainly a signal for Ali McCoy's to warm up on the track. Well, there's a stretcher being produced down on the track there. Well, he appears to have buckled somewhat as he went down. That can't be cramped, that's for sure. It wouldn't have that effect. And Walter Smith and Archie Knox have gone over to Gary Stevens to give them, to give him the instructions to resolve the positional problems created by the absence of Brown. Well, John Brown, a very tough character indeed. He must be in substantial pain if he remains on the ground like that. Well, let's see how this happened. There was John Brown going for the ball all by himself, and his knee appeared to give way there. No one else involved, and he's clearly in serious trouble. He may have damaged ligaments at the back of his knee. Ali McCoy is looking very calm, preparing to come on. Well, very sad moment for Brown and for Rangers. McCoy has now gone on, though, to a tremendous welcome. So the alterations being made involve Gary Stevens joining Nigel Spikeman in central defence, Terry Hurlock going to left back, 
McCoy is going up front with Haitley and Johnston dropping back into midfield beside Ian Ferguson in the middle. Headed down by right, here's Alec McLeish. He's given his all for Aberdeen all season and particularly in this match. Struggling with an injury for the last few weeks. Here's McKimmy. Now Grant. Handball by Ferguson. Good shot to McKimmy. Here's Bet in space on the right. The angle cross up goes Van der Ark. Not able to threaten Chris Woods with that header. Certainly does provide a new dimension to the Aberdeen attack. His height and awkward style, troublesome for defenders. Just listen to the singing now from the Rangers fans. So it seems to be all over now. Rangers with his two goal cushion. An injury time to survive. Aberdeen still looking for the first goal, never mind the second. And they put so much into the effort, they're beginning to look like me. They're certainly entitled to that. The whistling going on all around the stadium. The championship going to the very last seconds. Here's Robert Connor. Now McLeish up with the attack. McKimmy on the right, every Rangers player back defending except McCoy. Here's McKimmy, playing in the low cross, Johnston clears it. This is Stephen Wright. Bet again making the angle on the right. Going inside Haitley. Cross was won by Spackman. Here's Mark Haitley, the goal scoring hero. Looking for McCoy through the middle. The marker is Robertson. That's good play by McCoyst. Needed some help though, didn't have any. So Aberdeen have survived that attack. Now they come forward themselves. They must take great credit for the way in which they maintain their effort right to the end. Never at any stage had the towel gone in. Here's Hillhouse. Stopped by Stevens. And was he fouled outside the penalty area? Yes, by Harlock. It's a free kick to Aberdeen. So a late opportunity for what surely would only be a consolation goal for Aberdeen. Here's Jim Bett waiting for McLeish to arrive. Over it goes. And still the Rangers defence coping well with all these Aberdeen attacks. Every eye now on the referee as the ball is out of play. Waiting to see if Brian McGinley will bring this match to an end and make it formally. Rangers Championship, there it is! Rangers have won the championship. So Rangers have won the championship thanks to two goals from Mark Haitley. Won five minutes before half-time, a header from the Walters cross. And then ten minutes into the second half, Michael Watt couldn't hold a shot from Morris Johnston. And Mark Haitley made it two. Aberdeen then had no answer. They battled all the way to the end. Rangers defended extremely well despite losing Tom Cowan in the first half and John Brown in the second through injury. But Rangers in the end, running out excellent winners, are proving themselves to be genuine champions after this very long season. But Aberdeen deserving tremendous credit for their contribution to the championship race. The moments of celebration begin now for these Rangers supporters. For the players, the sense of relief, it all became so tense in the closing weeks and particularly in the last few days, but they've survived. There are four Englishmen there, Haithley, Harlock, Woods and Spackman, all savouring this occasion in which they won the Scottish League Championship. Well, the players clearly overjoyed. They're entitled to that. Not only did they win the match, they deserve to win it. They played extremely well. They threw everything at Aberdeen early on. They appeared to be hungry for the fight. They were sent out there, fired up by Walter Smith and Archie Knox, and they didn't let their supporters down. Aberdeen leaving the field disconsolate. They contributed so much, but it's Rangers who savour the moment. Applauding their supporters, it's being reciprocated. That's a performance which the Rangers supporters, I reckon, didn't dare expect. Rangers looking a little bit uncertain in these last few weeks. 
but Mark Akeley there coming up trumps at the end with two fine goals the first in particular a magnificent header from Mark Walters cross that's what broke the deadlock that's what took all the strain off and set up these Rangers supporters for a night of sheer joy and celebration so it'll be a long time I'm sure before the stadium is cleared the supporters will insist I'm sure on the return of the Rangers players to take a lap of honour but down below is now Dougie Donnelly is talking to Nigel Spikeman. Nigel, congratulations, league champions. How does it feel? The obvious question. How does it feel? I'm absolutely shattered, to be fair. And I think uh, the celebrations are just about to begin. The lads played magnificent today. I think anybody here, people who see on the telly tonight, <coughs> excuse me, I've lost my voice, are going to be amazed the way we played with injuries, people having to come on and play in different positions. <coughs> and I think over the season, with all the injuries we've had, I think today we just showed that we're a great squad of players and we've done the business when it counted. You were obviously very down after last Saturday. How hard was it to lift yourselves for, uh, for today? Well, I think we just approached today as if it was our cup final and we had home advantage. <clears throat> I think Aberdeen obviously have been playing very, very well, put a great run together and all credit to them. They came here and tried to win, but we were too good for them today. It wasn't a day for pretty football, really. It was a day for, for battling and for getting the win, wasn't it? I think so. I mean, in a game like that, as I said, many cup finals, this is a cup final for us, many cup finals aren't the best uh, type of football, you know, but we uh, got the goals today that counted and uh, in the end, I think we were worthy winners. Mark's first goal, I think, came at an important time because Aberdeen, I thought at that point, were just beginning to, to maybe get on top a little bit. Well, I think they uh, obviously sat back to start with, tried to waste a bit of time, which was, you know, the right thing to do. But uh, we kept plugging away, plugging away, and they were getting it down and giving us a few problems at the back, especially with uh, Tommy Cowan have to go off. But uh, in the end, the great ball in, and Mark Haley finished superbly, and uh, then we just went off from there. Congratulations. I know you've got a championship trophy to collect. We'll let you go, Nigel. Well Thank done. Thank you very much, Dougie. Thank you. So, very happy Nigel Spikeman, but he's no happier than these Rangers supporters. The big moment about to appear for these Rangers fans. The presentation of the championship trophy will go on in just a couple of minutes. So, Dougie Donnelly now is speaking to the Rangers manager, Walter Smith. Walter, I assume that champagne you've been soaked in. That is champagne I've been soaked in. Thank goodness it is as well. We've no bats now, so it has to be a champagne. Four games as a Rangers manager and a championship. How are you going to follow that? I don't know where I'll manage to fall. It's been a tense week, this one, after the defeat at Motherwell last week. And I thought our boys were magnificent to come back from that. And we've had a lot of blows this season, injury-wise. And to have won the championship this year, I think, is a tremendous feat. I noticed you were up and down from the stand to the dugout about half a dozen times in that second half. Was the tension getting to you? It must have been, I suppose. No, the telephone wouldn't have worked <laughs> <laughs> Now, you had to rearrange twice, didn't you, with the injuries? So it wasn't an easy game in that sense either, was it? Well, it was never going to be an easy one. There was always going to be a lot of tension. And when we lost the defender, we were short in that department anyway, because most of our injuries are, are in that department. Um, but we managed to cope, and some of the lads like Nigel Spikeman this year has played maybe four and five positions throughout that campaign and he's been terrific. Now, you've maybe struggled a little bit to find the net regularly in the last few weeks, but Mark Hatley just came good at the right time today, didn't he? Dougie, we only needed to score today, that was all. <laughs> the last few weeks, I've taken care of myself. It's a, it's a day for, uh, for celebration rather than looking ahead, but looking ahead to the European Cup next season, you must be very excited at that prospect. It's one thing I like about TV commentators. <laughs> Dougie, I only go over attention on this one. Please leave the European Cup in it. I know, it's not fair to ask you that. But how, how hard was it to, to prepare the players for today? Were they at all nervous or down after last Saturday? Well, they were nervous. Of course they were nervous. And um, they were a wee bit down. But, I mean, they're professional enough. They know that last Saturday's game was a one-off situation in terms of they lost a wee bit of discipline and tried to go away and win the match when they could just have sat and we would have kept ourselves there on goal difference but maybe chasing the game wasn't a bad thing anyway congratulations Walter enjoy tonight I'll enjoy it Dougie. thank you well done thanks Mark you've been a lot of places you've played for a few clubs how does today compare um, it's like everything it's great when you're winning you know every game every game you win's uh, uh, marvellous especially today. Man of the match, just to put a little icing on the cake. Were you at all worried that you hadn't been finding the net recently? Obviously, going so long without scoring, I think everybody's starting to get a bit edgy. You know, if you, you, your strikers aren't scoring, then, you know, it puts pressure on the team. Um, we've been scraping through 1-0s, one one, you know, 1-0 here and 1-0 there, but uh, you know, to be fair to the, to the chaps, everybody's rallied round. 
got behind each other. We knew at the end of the day that, you know, if we worked at it and stuck together that we'd, we'd get there. What was the attitude going into the game today? Because you knew that you had to win, a draw wouldn't be good enough. That's right, well, we've been preparing all week for one game, you know, one cup final. And uh, Rangers in a cup final, who'd bet against us? What about the atmosphere out there? I don't think I've ever heard it quite so noisy here at Ibrox. Well, they're brilliant. You know, uh, you, the pack come in. I can't wait till we get 52,000 in there. It'll be, uh, uh, it'll be frightening for opponents. And they get behind you and, uh, you know, they rally on and they get that little bit extra out of you, you know, when you're down in the last five minutes when your back's against the wall. And uh, park it to them now. Did it put any pressure on you at all, knowing that, you know, several weeks ago it looked all cut and dried and gradually the, whit the, the lead was being whittled away? It's never finished till the final ball's played. That's the way you look at it. You play from Saturday to Saturday in this game. And uh, as proven today, you know, we, we went, we, we, we should have had it, you know, wrapped up a, a little while ago. Unfortunately, we had a few suspensions and injuries. And at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's just reward for the boys. You know, we've all, we all stuck together and we came down to the final Saturday. Again, injury problems. And uh, we beat them 2 0. So, scenes of joy among these Rangers supporters. The news from Ibrox says that after winning by two goals to nil, thanks to Mark Hatley goals, Rangers are the 1991 League champions. And Nigel Spackman raising the League Championship trophy aloft. Rangers delighted after seeming to have lost the initiative in the championship race after Aberdeen's great late run. But it all forgotten today. And really a performance of great character and determination, which absolutely delighted the Rangers fans. The championship trophy then taken on its lap of honour around the stadium. The singing, which had hardly stopped all afternoon, seemed to grow in intensity. And uh, poor John Brown, who has a torn muscle and, of course, Tom Cowan has a fractured fibula out there, crutches and all, to join in the celebrations. And Walter Smith, can there ever have been a manager who has taken charge of a side for just four matches, a total of six hours of football, and at the end of it, a league championship trophy? And didn't Walter enjoy the day? Celebrations, I'm sure, still going on long into the night in Glasgow and indeed throughout Scotland. Those uh, Rangers supporters who undoubtedly felt the tension through this week and uh, the emotion getting to Ali McCoyst. It's not been the happiest of seasons for McCoyst, but my goodness, today more than made up for it. So those fans, no doubt, still celebrating, but Rangers are the B&Q Premier Division champions. And uh, let me say firstly, Derek, that I don't think I've ever heard such a noise inside Ibrox. Gaza McCoy's there, wasn't it? <laughs> You're right, Doug. I mean, I was there for 15 years. I've never heard noise and excitement like uh, this afternoon. Absolutely incredible, the, the noise the fans made this afternoon. It was a very tense game. We never expected a great yeah. game of football, and it wasn't yeah. a great game. Because it was so tense, you're never going to get a good game of football. There's so much pressure on the, the 22 players that are out there, Dougie. It was all going to be hammer and tongs, really, and, and that's exactly what happened today. And, and Rangers really played with the heart today. I think a lot of fans before the game, before it started, uh, didn't fancy Rangers' chances, but uh, I think the 13 players that played there today showed them that they can actually play with the heart as well. The timing of Mark Hatley's first goal I thought was crucial because before then Aberdeen had two guilt edge chances to take the lead, hadn't they? we we'll take a look at those. First of them I think fell to, to Peter van de Ven and uh, I, he'll watch this tonight and Well, it was a defensive mistake, do Dougie, yeah, but I don't know what he tried to do there. I mean, Hans Hulaus really there is, is raging at, at uh, van der Ven there. Should have done a lot better. I mean, it was so casual there, wasn't it? It was like a pass back from a defender. I don't know what he, what he tried to do. Whether he tried to chip the goalkeeper because he was far out, we don't know. And this is the, the Hill House header, which again, he will no doubt feel he should have done better with. Well, he would have, but it's one of them, Dougie, you go for it. You know, I don't think it was too high for him. He was just trying to place it. He, he, Nigel Spackman at his back, and uh, I think, given another couple of efforts at that, Dougie, I think he would have scored at it. But it was perfect height for him there. And uh, like Rangers last week at Motherwell, it just wasn't to be their day as far as putting the ball in the back, and it's concerned. Because at that point, I mean, Aberdeen were certainly going through the yeah. best spell of the game, but what a great goal this Well, was. pick that out. I mean, Joe Miller had been proud of that one as they've <laughs> kept saying through the weeks. But Mark Walters once more, you know, he only needs a yard to get in a good cross. Look at that. Defenders all around him. Superb cross. And look at that. One of the few times he outjumped 
uh, Alex McLeish in the game, but the important time to get magnificent header in the back of the net there. Now, what about this one? I think you disagree with me, but I think Mark Hitley is in an offside position. Now. Well, it's hard to say with, with the angle of the camera, do you? But uh, Morris Johnson's gone through. It was a bad defensive mistake by Aberdeen. You know, he's through there, and uh, he's got to have a shot there. He has a go. It's not the greatest of efforts from Morris, but the goalkeeper, who was very nervous all afternoon, dropped that one. And of course, Mark Hitley is all good strikers, right on hand to tap the ball into the net. So there we are, Rangers uh, champions. I think all credit though to Aberdeen yeah. because after all we were saying six, seven, eight weeks ago that the league was all sewn up. Well, Rangers were top of the league since uh, mid-November, Dougie, and they were 10, 12 points clear in January and everyone thought it was finished. So well done to Aberdeen for keeping it going so long, but today was certainly Rangers day. Who were the, the outstanding players? There were two or three particularly, I think, in the Rangers. There were, there, obviously, there? Uh, Mark Hately scored the two goals and played very well, ran himself into the ground, but for me, I think Gary Stevens was absolutely outstanding. He started the game at right back when Tom Cowan went off. He went to left back and was outstanding and finished the game at centre back. I thought he had an absolute.